Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. My name is Clayton Chastain, your host for today's episode. Today we have with us Kelsey Hammers, a PhD student at the University of Minnesota. How are you doing today? Good, how are you? Pretty great. So Kelsey, would you mind sharing with us the sink study you did? Yeah, sure. So before I get into the study, I'll give you a bit of a background. So one of the biggest issues in the swine industry, and I'm sure we are all well aware of, is that we continue to see the higher incidence of low birth weight pigs being born. And this is primarily driven by the selection for larger litter sizes. So when we have these low birth weight pigs, these are pigs usually that are classified as pigs weighing one kilogram or less at birth or around 2.2 pounds. So these low birth weight pigs often have a mortality rate of 50 to 50 to 80 percent, which is quite high when also when we know that pre weaning mortality is also an issue in the swine industry. So a few studies have shown that supplementing high zinc actually decreases pre weaning mortality of these pigs when this high zinc is fed around day 80, uh, day 80 of gestation. And this is suggesting that zinc perhaps has a fetal programming effect. And one of these studies were actually from our group, and our group fed up to 365 or up to 600 parts per million of zinc, and they observed pre-weaning mortality of low birth weight pigs to decrease by 10 percentage points. And they also observed pre-weaning mortality of heavy birth weight pigs to decrease and a tendency for overall pre-weaning mortality to decrease. But this additional zinc was fed in a top dress form, which is fine in a research setting. However, when we think of a commercial setting, this isn't as feasible as we have to have additional labor and labor is also a huge in industry problem. So for our trial, we had two objectives. We wanted to determine if a practical approach to feeding high zinc to gestating sows, while also validating if pre-weaning mortality could be reduced by feeding zinc during different time points in gestation other than day 80. So for this trial, we used about 267 mixed parity sows and allotted them to one of three dietary treatments. So the sows either were fed a controlled diet that had 125 parts per million of zinc that was directly just from the trace mineral premix, or sows were allotted to the breed de ferro treatment, which was the controlled diet, however, an addition of 266 ppm of total supplemental zinc. And this was fed five days after breeding all the way to farrowing. And the last treatment, we called it the day 110 to farrow treatment, as it was the controlled diet, however, with a, an addition of 2,840 parts per million of zinc uh, fed starting at day 110 of gestation all the way to farrowing, so for five days. So for this trial, there were about uh, 4,000 piglets on the study, and we measured sow and piglet performance. And jumping into the results, we really didn't see a difference in the number of total born pigs. However, we observed a 2.3% increase in the uh, percent of pigs born alive and a 2.7% reduction in the number of stillborn pigs for sow's fed high zinc uh, all the way throughout farrowing compared to those other two treatments. And pre-winning mortality, of course, was the variable of interest for our study. And we actually observed no differences in overall pre-weaning mortality and unfortunately no mortality response in pre-weaning mortality of low birth weight pigs. However, we did observe a tendency for reduced pre-weaning mortality of normal birth weight pigs. So it appears from our study that the timing of zinc supplementation may be critical as we, we observe no mortality response, but other literature suggests that feeding high zinc at day 80 does decrease pre-weaning mortality of low birth weight pigs. However, while we did not observe a mortality response, feeding zinc throughout gestation decreased the intrapartum mortality of piglets for those sows fed high zinc all the way throughout farrowing. And to take my study a step further, we are also interested in the mode of action of zinc. So we are working with a human nutritionist in this area, as we hope our findings will benefit not only gestating sows and swine producers, but also pregnant women, as zinc deficiency is a common problem worldwide. So we hope to find a suitable biomarker for zinc that could be used in humans as well. 
Gotcha. So um, one thing I noticed with the study is that you used uh, for the supplemental zinc, you used uh, zinc sulfate, correct? Yes. Yeah, we did. So why did you use zinc sulfate over zinc oxide for the study? Sure. So we use zinc sulfate other than zinc, uh, zinc oxide just bit to, to remain consistent with the available literature as the, the recently published studies use zinc sulfate as well. So we kind of wanted to maintain consistency with those studies just to kind of limit the variation. However, that is also another possible question if zinc source would impact, impact piglet survivability as well, such as a different inorganic source such as zinc oxide, but also pub possibly an organic source of zinc as well. Gotcha. And then also, um, this might be, this might tie into more of what you plan to do in the future with the study, as you were kind of mentioning before. Um, but what do you hypothesize is like the main uh, mode of action of the zinc um, on the piglets in this study? Yeah, so we really aren't sure on the exact mechanism of zinc, as zinc is a really tricky mineral to assess in the body, as it's used in a lot of tissues and widely throughout the body. However, in my study, we collected samples to assess the possible mode of action of zinc, uh, working through either changing maternal or piglet zinc status, or influencing the intestinal microbial populations of sows that could then seed the microbiome of their piglets or assessing if zinc has a role in differential gene expression for low versus average birth weight pigs or between our dietary treatments. Gotcha. Well, I think the what you're planning to do in the future with that study sounds very interesting and could be beneficial not only to the swine industry, but to other people as well. Well, thank you for sharing this trial with us, but I think that's all we have time for. And to everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com and don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week. Hey everyone, we're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show to talk about it and share with us, feel free to send an email to nutritionblackbelt at swineit.com and we would love to take a look at your research. Oh.